Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 8th of February. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information, and you can do that easily by giving us a call at the Alaska Weather Information Line, 1-800-472-0391 is that number. Uh, write it down in your fridge, uh, post it by the phone. Uh, remember the numbers that you use to dial your forecast once you uh, uh, get that answer, and you can dial it in a little bit faster next time. Many of you have already done that, I know. Here's a look at the website, weather.gov slash Alaska is the place to go. Uh, an easy click on that site on the map will take you to your local forecast information. One more click, though, gives you an even more hyper-local look at that forecast. So if you're doing some traveling, perhaps you're uh, going out to camp, uh, just click on that map, move the map around a little bit, and you'll be able to get a really specific forecast for that point anywhere in Alaska, whether you're out on the boat or you're uh, driving down the highway there. If you're traveling to Juneau, uh, click on the map, click on it one more time, move the map around just a little bit more, and click in the dead center, and that hyper-local forecast is yours. Bookmark that if you're going to go back to that spot or if that's home. Uh, it's a great way to check your local forecast because the forecasters around Alaska are always working on that hyper-local forecast to make sure that your information where you are is as uh, precise as possible. Of course, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll find links to the Aviation Weather Unit uh, around Alaska. You can get your flying weather there. Uh, you can also get information about recent earthquakes from uh, tsunami.gov. And, of course, uh, information about ice thickness and snowfall around Alaska, uh, leading up to uh, information about our local rivers. All of that from the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center. A whole lot more on that webpage anytime, weather.gov slash Alaska. And, of course, if you can't find what you're looking for, please let me know. I'm happy to help you any way I can. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is the easiest way to find me online. Now, as you look at your hazardous weather across Alaska, really the only thing that's really sticking out is the wind. And if you're traveling through White Pass, that's going to be the issue. We've said this for days and days and days. But the wind chill up around the top of White Pass is about 40 below or so. It could be that cold anyway with the amount of cold and the amount of wind rushing down through uh, Skagway and uh, into the Lynn Canal. Heavy freezing spray has been an issue. Uh, strong winds have been an issue across parts of uh, northern and central southeast. Even had its storm force winds blowing through the Lynn Canal earlier today. Uh, the, the high winds around Skagway have been subsiding, so we're not expecting that really strong surge of gusts to continue a whole lot longer. It will be windy. It just won't be as windy as what we were talking about. And uh, with that amount of air going through the White Pass region, it, it's just going to be cold. So make sure that you've got enough supplies in your car. If something happens and you get stuck there, you're not going to want to be that cold, of course, uh, because only 30 minutes or so and exposed skin at 40 below, that's frostbite territory. So be extra careful. Make sure that anybody traveling in understands that level of cold there is possible there through the White Pass region. Now up north, not a whole lot going on. No winter weather advisories. The skies are generally clear. Fairbanks has got a decent inversion going right now. But out across the west and southwest, you can see clouds building in from the south. Uh, but the big high pressure system across the western Yukon that is pushing that air into northern parts of southeast is, uh, is also a problem. It's labeled as 1,055 millibars on our chart here in just a minute, and aviators know that's uh, across the big red line there. 1,050 and above uh, can uh, give you uh, improper settings or at least the appearance of improper readings on uh, your altimeter. So uh, again, uh, keep, uh, use extra caution there as you're checking your settings there across eastern parts of the interior from north way up toward Eagle today. The high pressure center here out a little bit closer to Dawson and across uh, some areas here uh, in the upper Tanana Valley. So uh, a big area, very cold and very dense air. Usually happens you know, once or twice in the season there, and here we are. Low pressure out across the central Bering Sea, drawing up a substantial area of southerly winds. And as you'll see in the aviation section in just a little bit, uh, the upper level warming with that is pretty substantial. The freezing levels up around six to even 8,000 feet in some cases there. Uh, so that's also changing the uh, the icing potential, uh, running that up pretty high. And it's also changing the amount of ice we have out across southwestern Alaska. That deep south and easterly flow zipping across has created areas of high turbulence across parts of the Alaska Peninsula, and it is chewing up the ice down below. So a lot of changes there with that stiff and southeasterly flow. Up north, you can see some of the clouds wrapping your way in more from a west to easterly direction. A frontal boundary sitting up across the Beaufort Sea. Uh, this is channeling a lot of that moisture into the northern sections of Canada. Along that boundary, probably going to have some snow, areas of fog, and that's going to drift southward from time to time, just kind of graze the coast and lift back north. And, and you'll see that happen a couple times on our charts coming up. 
Here's a look at the surface chart now. As of this afternoon, low pressure was sitting across the Bering Sea. That was holding at about 988 millibars there. Around that boundary, areas of light rain across the Alaska Peninsula, around the Pribilov, some pockets of very light snow around Sparavon, Lake Iliamna, and west. And then we have our big rough, tough, and hard to bluff area of high pressure, 1,055 millibars. Uh, frontal boundary draped across southeast. This was providing that focus, uh, that kind of that vacuum, in fact, along the trough of low pressure, bringing that along the Pacific Northwest coastline and allowing that cold air to drain out uh, fairly well. A trough is moving across the Central Brooks Range and across the Chukchi Sea, that creating some clouds there. Not a whole lot of precipitation reported with that at the moment. And so we've got this very deep south and easterly flow flowing across the west coast. As we get into tonight and tomorrow, I'm not going to be really surprised to see turbulence issues continue across the Alaska Peninsula and maybe across the southwestern capes as well. Areas of blowing snow, that's what you get when you see those crossed arrows there. That means visibility could be reduced thanks to uh, ground uh, blizzards at their worst or perhaps just occasional blowing snow at the least amount. That'll happen a little bit more around St. Lawrence Island and the Chukchi Sea where the ice pack is uh, fairly solid at this point. Areas of rain and snow, that line moving northward uh, from about Bristol Bay to areas just north of the Pribilovs up through Nunavak Island and out across the central chain, 989 millibars, periods of rain and snow there as well. Colder air fills in behind that and you can see the trough out across the western bearing running around 990 millibars. Good news is right now, the forecast predictions are that the high pressure system is weakening and overall that will be true. Does it weaken this much? It's worth watching tomorrow. Areas uh, out across the Alcan border and into the uh, Copper River Valley, probably looking at fog. Uh, but, uh, you know, is this 1046? Is this 1051? Yeah, it, it's going to be close. So keep your eyes on that if you're flying around North Way to Eagle and along the Alcan border to Toke. Uh, perhaps uh, tonight and into tomorrow. As we get into early morning, uh, it does still look like that pressure center is going to be decreasing a little bit more. And the trend is that way because low pressure is starting to cut in on that western periphery. So this whole stable area of high pressure is, is shrinking in its intensity and diminishing somewhat. So there is good news there. And this cold air is going to move on into um, uh, central and western sections of Canada and eventually the lower 48 with a lot of cold. So uh, conditions are changing. Out across the west and south, you see a 979 millibar low there. That's south of Nikolsky, and this is gradually drifting northward. Warmer air is being pushed quickly toward Kodiak Island. All that moisture and the wind probably creating turbulence uh, issues again around southwest and uh, the Kodiak Island region. Areas of snow and rain will continue working northward and a lot of warmth, in fact. So areas around the Pribilovs, uh, Kodiak Island to uh, Cold Bay Falls Pass, King Cove. You're all looking at rainfall, it looks like. Uh, probably areas of rain mixed with snow as the low pressure system passes over the central chain. Up north, clouds are dropping south of the Brooks Range. Most areas in the interior and in south central will be generally clear, but uh, there will probably be more clouds approaching Arctic Village out toward uh, uh, the coastal plain and the Beaufort Sea Coast. You remember how I said that line was going to be moving back and forth in tomorrow's weather. It looks like it's dropping southward just a little bit. So areas of fog and maybe some light snow may be found there, occasional stronger winds. By Saturday, that organized low pressure system we had across the Alaska Peninsula that was moving north has now shifted into the central bearing. It is strengthening a little bit, 985 millibar low there, but a lot of that warm and cold air is now mixed up quite a bit. So what do you get? You get these spokes that look like uh, kind of the lines coming out of the hub of a bicycle wheel. And along each one of those lines is a little extra lift in the atmosphere that helps to build uh, showers of rain and snow as they spin around that low in a counterclockwise fashion. As they move across south and western Alaska, the winds will probably come up. So as this moves from south to north, watch for the wind gusts to pick up a little bit more on Saturday. Uh, but you'll probably get some passing areas of rain and then maybe back to the snow as that mixes in between on Saturday afternoon. Most of the interior is still generally dry. High pressure is still in charge of your weather pattern. You can see that ridge still holding on here across parts of the Yukon and British Columbia. And there will still be some areas of fog across the upper Yukon, uh, probably across the Copper River Valley. Uh, but out across the west, rain and snow will become a little bit more likely from Nome all the way through Unilaclete uh, into Galena perhaps at its most eastern extent. And then also up across Cook Inlet from south to north, you'll start to see a better chance of snow developing there. Uh, areas around the Anchorage region could be looking at some light snow. And watch for some pockets of rain to push in from Prince William Sound, Cashmack Bay, and uh, probably into Homer, rain and snow possible there. And even a chance around the Juneau region as uh, this ridge and controlling area of very stable and dry high pressure starts to fall apart. Temperature-wise, we'll see some changes in the interior as well. Watch for warmer weather 
Uh, as we get into Friday morning, it's not going to be warm just yet. Fort Yukon, you're still running around 40 below. Uh, Fairbanks in the middle Tanana region, probably 15 to 30 below in some cases. Five below to five above for the Cook Inlet region, including Anchorage, uh, Palmer, and Wasilla region. It could be as cold as five below. Teens to mid-20s for parts of southeast. The Bristol Bay region, we expect temperatures back in the mid to upper 20s. Closer to 40 as you head out through the Alaska Peninsula to Unalaska and Dutch Harbor. 36 in St. Paul, Bethel around 12, and about the same for Nome. High temps there on Friday. Uh, 16 below for Fort Yukon, that's your high. Four above in Eagle, looking at single digits for Fairbanks. 20s to maybe even the upper 30s around Seward and Homer, closer to 40 in uh, Kodiak. Upper 30s to low 40s around parts of southwest. Sandpoint 41, southeast, upper 20s to mid 30s for you. The North Slope, you're looking at temps in the teens. Nome around 26, and uh, let's say Kotzebue and Shishmaref also in the lower teens. Overnight lows back in the single digits there. Three below in Barrow, 28 below in Fort Yukon, 11 below in Eagle, and 26 below in Northway. Fairbanks looking at temperatures uh, closer to 20 below. Teens and 20s for South Central, 40 in Kodiak, not a big change there. Teens and 20s for Southeast, 30s for most of South and West. As you get into highs on Saturday, back in the single digits for Eagle and uh, Fairbanks around 3. Upper 20s, still below freezing for South Central on the road system there. 40 in Kodiak, Bristol Bay temps. Dillingham, you're looking at 43, King Salmon 41. Bethel, upper 30s, above freezing, 28 in Nome. And Dutch Harbor, you're looking at a high of 42 on Saturday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On the flying weather now, IFR conditions will be forming around a surge of southerly wind. That warm and wet air is sending freezing levels to uh, about uh, four, six, even 8,000 feet across uh, parts of the northern Bering Sea and into the Chukchi. You'll see that in just a minute. In the meantime, that warm and wet air is hitting the Alaska Peninsula and some of the colder water and over the ice in some cases, creating poor visibility in lower decks. So you can see across the Beaufort Sea coast as well, uh, MVFR and IFR conditions just offshore, but for southeast, for south central and the interior, conditions should remain VFR through most of your Friday. You'll see more changes there across the west coast. Some of that IFR is sneaking up into the Kuskokwim Delta, south of Akiak, all the way down to the windward side of the Alaska Peninsula and through the central and parts of the western chain hit and miss. MVFR should be fairly widespread. You'll notice MVFR dropping southward as well across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast with areas across southeast, south central, and the interior remaining at VFR. Saturday morning, wrapping around low pressure across the southern bearing. You can see IFR stretching from Nunavak Island to just north of the Pribilofs, the Yukon Delta coastline, and more parts of Kodiak Island falling under IFR conditions there. Southeast, south central, and the interior is still looking good, but MVFR is starting to work into parts of Cook Inlet and uh, the western end of the Gulf Coast around the Kenai Peninsula there. So watch for changes as we go into Saturday. IFR will develop across the Kenai Fjords region and up Resurrection Bay and into the western end of Prince William Sound by Saturday afternoon. MVFR banks up against the outer coast of southeast, though the interior looks uh, pretty clear right now. Uh, interior of uh, mainland Alaska also looking pretty good. VFR conditions through Saturday afternoon. With MVFR lingering across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, the, MVF, or the IFR pulls away just a little bit. But IFR conditions also spread northward toward the Bering Strait for Nome, Savunga, Gamble, and uh, up toward uh, Wales, and Tin City, Nunavak Island, and most of the Yukon Delta, and some parts of the Yukon, or the Kuskokwim Delta, I should say, with MVFR across the Pribilofs. Your pass conditions, though, as we just saw, should be pretty good. Anaktuvik, Adigan Pass, all the way from Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, Rainy Pass, Windy Pass, Isabel Pass, all VFR conditions there, so no worries. Through Mentasta, VFR conditions are expected there. Tanita Pass and Portage Pass also looking pretty good. Chilkoot and White Pass are going to be A-OK -okay at this point. But remember, I said freezing levels were changing. That warm and wet air punching up from the south to the north is bringing a lot of warm air into the western end of the Brooks Range, the Noatak Kobuk Valleys there, into uh, the YK Delta region and the upper Kuskokwim and middle Yukon. Levels there as high as six and in some cases pushing 8,000 feet. There's a wealth of warm air there as the pattern changes. And you can see that well, uh, warmth is also accumulating across the central and western Gulf. The surface freezing line runs along the outer coast south of the Kenai Peninsula through Bristol Bay and just north of St. Matthew Island for your Friday morning. Here's a look at the icing potential then. Uh, as you would expect, uh, those levels are pretty high up there, above about 10,000 feet. One thing that is going to change though on Friday is the possibility of seeing some snow across the western Gulf and some of the higher terrain around Kodiak Island. So keep watching that forecast there. If that doesn't set up, that probably increases the risk 
for more icing in the region. But with snow falling there, uh, that'll probably wipe out some of the icing threat around Kodiak Island for Friday. So once again, uh, make sure you're checking up on the latest forecast for you head out of town. For the central and eastern Aleutians, above 8,000 feet, there's an isolated moderate risk. And right along the Beaufort Seacoast, above 6,000 feet, we'll be watching for some icing potential there. Here's a look at the jet stream. No wonder things have changed so much. We get into a much stronger southerly flow across the west coast, anywhere from 60 to about 95 knots. Ridging is really uh, substantial across the Gulf uh, with southerlies at 85 knots. That west and northwesterly flow into the Pacific Northwest at 150 knots. And you can see that northwesterly flow moving away from the Arctic at 130 knots there with pretty widespread trough across the continental United States and Canada. That across the west, uh, still a pretty decent trough from the Bering into the North Pacific. With the main flow there running between 130 and 150 knots. So here's 9,000 feet. Here's our ridge stretching from uh, oh, the eastern Gulf all the way up toward the Chukchi Sea, the southerly flow at 40 to 60 knots. West and northwesterlies across the interior and southerlies around the Aleutians there. Uh, westerlies already kicking it across the western chain. You can see that southeasterly flow going strong 30 to 50 knots there with high pressure just offshore of Yakutat. Light winds across southeast and the ridge across the interior slowing things down. So once again, our turbulence focus is going to stretch all the way from the west coast on the Chukchi Sea, Kotzebue Sound region through Norton Sound, and then really ramp up around Bristol Bay as we head into Friday with the possibility for isolated severe, just as we've seen uh, isolated severe across the Alaska Peninsula through today and yesterday, below 4,000 feet. Now watch for chop a little bit further to the west. <music> Elvis in the sky. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Okay, okay, what's with the posing? Oh, this, uh, didn't you know there's an Elvis constellation in the sky? Oh no. Yeah, well, you know, it's nothing official, but if you squint and let your imagination go wild, a group of stars looks a little like the king. Oh, are you talking about Orion? He does have a snazzy belt like Elvis. I know. Picture Orion as Elvis in the later years, donning his sparkliest outfit. And you know what? He's also got a hound dog. I love it. Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for any night this week facing southeast at 8 p.m. There you'll easily find the constellation Orion the Hunter standing about halfway up in the sky with his three stars in a row. Okay, Dean, so how exactly does this giant hunter look like Elvis? You mean beyond the star-studded wardrobe? Mm -hmm. Well, in the traditional drawing of Orion, he's a hunter holding a club in one hand and a lion skin in the other, trying to fend off a charging bull. That's Taurus over to his right. But what if it's really Elvis wearing a sequin belt, raising a microphone in one hand, and holding back his adoring fans with the other? Hmm. Wow, that's some imagination. I guess it does look like a traditional Elvis pose. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, your Elvis is complete with some really bright stars. The bright blue star on his left foot is called Rigel. Hmm, that could pass as a blue suede shoe. And the reddish star under his right arm is called Beetlejuice. Hmm, that seems like a funny place to put a sequin. Rigel is a supergiant star over 800 light years from us. It is one of the most luminous stars in the galaxy, shining about 130,000 times brighter than our sun. If Rigel was 25 times closer to us, it would appear many times brighter than any other star or planet in the sky. Only the moon and sun would be brighter. Betelgeuse is about 640 light years away. Its red color tells us a story. It tells us that Betelgeuse has a surface temperature of a little under 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Rigel, on the other hand, is blue and way hotter, over 21,000 degrees. Since Betelgeuse is relatively cool, but still very bright to us on Earth, it must be huge. Let's put our sun next to Rigel, next to Betelgeuse. Yikes, that's a big sequin, I mean star. Orion, like Elvis, has a hound dog in the sky. Connect a line through the belt stars and keep going down and to the left. You'll run into the brightest star in the sky, the dog star, Sirius. The ancients pictured the star as Orion's larger hunting dog, Canis Major. Sirius marks the nose of the dog and the other stars make up the feet and body. Yep, 
To me, that looks exactly like a hound dog. And there's one more connection. Just as the Elvis song says, you ain't nothing but a hound dog crying all the time, the star Sirius was a signal to the Egyptians that the rains were coming and the Nile was about to flood. Also in the Elvis song, the hound dog is chasing a rabbit. Well, lo and behold, there is a rabbit constellation up there too. Look just below Orion's feet and you may see a small four-sided figure of stars with a few others thrown in. That marks the constellation Lepus the Hare. So, as the stars move over the course of the night from east to west, our hound dog, Canis Major, looks to be chasing after our rabbit, Lepus. Now, remember the line, you ain't never caught a rabbit and you ain't no friend of mine? Well, I guess Canis Major will forever be chasing after that rabbit, but he'll never catch him. And Orion seems completely uninterested in his hound dog since he's busy fighting off Taurus the Bull. Oh yeah, certainly doesn't look like a friend of his. Okay, you convinced me. Orion and Canis Major are really Elvis and his hound dog. It's fun to put your own spin on the classic constellations. Who knows what you'll see when you keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time for a quick check of your sea ice edge, and you'll notice that conditions in southwestern Alaska have changed a lot thanks to that deep south and easterly flow moving through, chewing up a lot of the ice there that's fairly new in age. Now, the older ice, probably not in much danger there, as a lot of that's a little bit thicker. However, this is on the move. A lot of the heavier pack ice has been pushed westward toward the Gulf of Anadir, so some of it is certainly on the move with that deep southerly and easterly flow. You can see a large area of open water just to the west and north of St. Lawrence Island there, and uh, ice continues to be found uh, across at least the northern half of Cook Inlet as of the 8th of February. For the latest analysis and updates, head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Here's a look at southeast now. For tomorrow, northerly winds will continue. The gusts will also continue, but the strength of that wind should be diminishing compared to what you've seen for the last, uh, I don't know, week, two weeks now, it seems like. Northerlies in the Lynn Canal up to 30 knots, 20 knots there for Stevens Passage, gust to 35 knots, seas four to six feet, and it is going to be cold. It is going to be blustery, but again, it shouldn't be quite as bad as what you've experienced, especially in the last 24 hours. Northerlies in Clarence Strait with four foot seas and more of a gentle offshore flow, about 10 to 15 knots with generally five foot seas across the outer coast. As we get into Saturday, Notice the wind switching around, a little bit more of a southerly flow coming up Lynn Canal, 10 knots and 2 foot seas there, 20 knots in Clarence Strait with 4 foot seas, and a south and easterly flow across the outer coast, 20 to 25, with 8 to 9 foot seas there. As low pressure strengthens in the central Gulf, you can see the seas coming up there across the northern Gulf. We'll check on that in a moment. In Prince William Sound tomorrow, northerlies, 10 knots and 2 foot seas, easterlies crossing the north and western Gulf, 20 to as strong as 40 knots coming into the Barren Islands, 12 to 13 foot seas there, and north and easterly winds coming down Cook Inlet. You're looking at about seven foot seas south of the Ice Edge, which is pretty close to Calgon Island now, and still drifting southward. There's ice in Kashemak Bay as well. Again, check the ice forecast and page anytime. Uh, north and uh, the northern Gulf looking at 30 to 40 knots. Uh, look at the seas coming up as well. You can see that blue color indicating that we're approaching that 20 foot level, 15 to 17 foot seas closer to the coast, 15 knots inside of Prince William Sound, northerlies over the ice in northern Cook Inlet at 15 knots, and then stronger winds as you head south toward Homer and south of Kenai, looking at 10 to 12 foot seas there in the ice-free region. For southwest, this is where we're really going to have most of the strongest winds. Uh, aircraft are experiencing turbulence in it. Uh, the surface there, some pretty choppy weather, looking for storm force winds inside of Bristol Bay, just south of the ice edge as well. Gusts to 60 knots with an 11 foot sea, 45 knots down the coast, and 45 to 50 knot winds across the region. Uh, would be surprised to get a hurricane force gust in the lee of the Alaska Peninsula. So don't be surprised for some really strong winds as we get into Friday. Northeasterly is in Shelikoff Strait up to 45 as well. 15 foot seas expected there. As we get into Saturday, improving conditions south and westerlies for most areas, 25 to 30 knots, six to eight foot seas across the Bering. And you're looking at about eight foot seas in the Shelikoff Strait region, 15 to 18 foot seas across the Pacific coast 
for your Saturday. For the chain, uh, well, garden variety wind, 15 to 25 knots, all areas looking into north and easterly flow for the Bering Sea coast, generally easterly for the eastern chain on the Pacific side, 10 to 14 foot seas there, and a kind of a variable flow out across the west, 20 to 25 with 10 foot seas there on Friday. Saturday, things start to line up a little bit more. We get into that westerly flow, and because of that, we start to see a little bit more of a fetch developing. Uh, looking at 13 to 15 foot seas there with seas coming up to around 20 feet north of the central chain, 17 to almost 20 feet there across the Pacific coast, and seas out west still holding around 9 to 10 feet with a 20 knot wind. Across the west, offshores anywhere from 25 to 35 knots. Uh, in the ice-free areas, 9 to 16 foot seas there with seas or winds. Uh, again, a storm force uh, just south of the ice edge, around 50 knots there in the Kuskokwim Delta, looking for 25 to 30 on Saturday and improving conditions. Seas ranging from around 7 to 9 feet in the ice free region. Up north, gentle winds for the Beaufort Seacoast, 10 to 15 knots, and offshore flow out of the Kotzebue Sound region, 20 to 25 north of St. Lawrence Island. And winds start to pick up a little bit more from the east, 25 to 30 on Saturday over the ice, therefore, the entire region. Recapping tonight's weather, wind chill advisory still in effect for the White Pass region right about there. Uh, 40 below, that's as cold as it could be there with the winds uh, all coming out of this very deep and dense area of high pressure and into the trough of low pressure across southeast. Watch for some areas of fog across the Copper River Valley and across the upper Yukon. Clouds across the north slope, maybe some flurries near the Beaufort Sea coast. Low pressure drawing in some strong southeasterly winds out of uh, the southwestern parts of Alaska and the Alaska Peninsula. Periods of rain and snow expected with that, and as we saw, some very strong winds across the region as the winds diminish in parts of southeast. Rain and snow for the west coast as we get into your Saturday. Rain becoming snow across south central and into the outer coast of southeast heading into the weekend. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.